His ideals gave my life meaning. Ideals, Jack. What are yours? I protect the weak. <laughs> Still? So naive. Given Metal Gear's reputation as probably the most beloved stealth action franchise in the world, it's fair to say that producing a spin-off game which eschews sneaking around in favor of cutting a dude in half and crushing his spine in your bare hands was, to put it lightly, a bit of a gamble. However, with series creator Hideo Kojima serving as executive producer and noted purveyors of batshit insane titles Platinum Games at the helm, it seems like fans of both the franchise and the genre had a reason to be cautiously optimistic about Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And I'm pleased to report that while it's not a total slam dunk, Revengeance does succeed in delivering delivering some truly enjoyable and absolutely crazy over-the-top action, which overall makes the game a wild ride, albeit a short and uneven one. Your team deserves credit as well, Mr. Lightning Bolt. Just doing our job, Mr. Prime Minister. Metal Gear Rising takes place in the near future of 2018, four years after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4, and it places players in the shoes of Metal Gear Solid 2's divisive sword-wielding protagonist Raiden instead of Solid Snake. Raiden is now working for a private military company somewhere in Africa, providing training for the armies and security for the president, when agents from a more sinister security force ambush his motorcade, kidnapping and eventually murdering the president, and of course setting in motion the events over the rest of the game. As you might expect, what initially starts as Raiden's simple quest for revenge eventually tumbles deeper down a twisted rabbit hole of international conspiracy, dystopian sci-fi, and eventually the war on terror all handled with the absurdity and heavy-handedness typical of the franchise. The cutscenes are copious, and it often feels like I spend more time watching the game than I did playing it, but there is a certain charm to the melodramatic scripting and voice work that makes these sequences at least a little entertaining, if not entirely engaging. Rising Story also introduces several characters that range from legitimately kind of interesting all the way down to staggering Jar Jar Binks levels of annoying. Raiden falls somewhere between these two extremes, and his telegraphed mid-game shift in personality feels both half-baked and poorly executed. Two of the more tolerable new characters are Sam and Sundowner, a couple of the game's most visible and persistent villains. They're painted in broad strokes, sure, but they're at least fun to listen to. On the other hand, there's also characters like George, a Guyanese tween you rescue early in the game, who speaks with a distinctive dialect that makes him frustrating to listen to and perhaps even borderline offensive. So what are you doing here? Me? What the rest of you do here? You lose the map of Ninja Hideout, Ninja Man. So although the story and characters are a bit of a mixed bag, the big reason why people are excited for Metal Gear Rising is to see how Platinum Games have been able to marry the Metal Gear universe with their trademark over-the-top style of action. And I have to say that the new style of combat usually works pretty well. Your moveset is pretty simple, consisting of light and heavy attacks that can be mixed up in sequence to produce a variety of combos to take down your foes. As Raiden lacks the ability to block or dodge, your defensive options are entirely limited to a parry, which is executed by pushing the analog stick towards your enemy and hitting the quick attack button right as they strike. Although this might might seem pretty meager, the parry is sufficient to stop most incoming blows, and the timing window is generous enough that you can succeed without being absolutely perfect in your execution. This being said, you're often dealing with attacks from multiple attackers in multiple directions, so being able to parry consistently requires paying close attention, and the mixture between performing your own combos and parrying the attacks of your enemies creates a delicate ballet of violence that is enhanced by the game's fluid attack animations. The game mixes up combat a bit by adding in the much vaunted blade mode, which allows you to control with extreme precision the direction and position of your strikes, thus making it possible to either specifically target an enemy's weak point or just mash the buttons furiously to do as much damage as possible in a short period of time. Rather than being a simple gimmick, Blade Mode is actually a very important part of combat on a regular basis. Raiden is rewarded with a form of in-game currency for chopping off specific enemy body parts, and he's actually able to replenish his health by chopping dudes in half and consuming their spinal fluid. You have to admire the developer's commitment to both violence and insanity when a regular game mechanic involves splitting a dude up the middle and eating his backbone in front of his colleagues. So, far from being a button masher, playing and succeeding in Revenge requires bouncing back and forth between parrying, making combos on the fly, and switching into blade mode to improve your score and replenish health. And this variety kept things fresh for me over the brisk 6 or 7 hours it took me to finish the campaign. Blade mode is also essential when it comes to the game's boss fights, which are perhaps unsurprisingly the most dramatic and interesting encounters you'll have in the entire game. All bosses have their own unique weaknesses, but discovering these weaknesses and then learning how to exploit them takes time, and the game is not shy about punishing you severely for making mistakes. While regular encounters in Revengeance can be difficult enough, I often found my progress waylaid by incredibly difficult boss fights that sometimes took me dozens of tries to complete. Make no mistake, although this is a short game, it's also quite a difficult one, and whether that strikes you as a frustration or a breath of fresh air is likely going to boil down to your personal preferences. 
One thing I will say is that Revengeance does a woefully inadequate job of teaching players about the abilities at their disposal. The game's introductory tutorial is incredibly brief and does not sufficiently explain what to do with abilities like the Blade Mode in order to use them effectively. Additionally, although you can use battle points earned in-game to purchase new moves, the way you actually execute these moves isn't really properly articulated anywhere in my experience. It's not that the game is necessarily complex, but I sadly didn't really feel like I knew how to use all the tools at my disposal until I was well past the halfway point of the campaign. However, Metal Gear Rising does do a good job of throwing a variety of fairly distinctive enemies at you over its relatively short campaign. Sure, you'll chop through a decent amount of cannon fodder, but there's also a lot of enemies that are dangerous enough on their own and downright deadly when mixed into a group. Although the game's content is consistently fun, the level design leaves a lot to be desired both graphically and in terms of gameplay. The levels are cast largely in drab grays and browns, and the formula of chopping down enemies in a gray hallway, followed by a cutscene, followed by repeating the same thing in another gray hallway can get pretty old pretty fast. Thankfully, the game itself is at least somewhat decent looking and it runs at a consistent frame rate. This, combined with the excellent player animations, makes Revengeance look pretty good in motion, but I definitely wish the environments had more character. Hey, you know any damn squad, nah? Nah, I guess you're alright. Overall, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a bit of a slippery game to review. It's kind of a mixed bag in many areas, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is consistently fun, and Blade Mode adds an interesting and unique element to the combat, which also enables you to consume the spines of your enemies, which unironically gives me a certain amount of juvenile pleasure. Still, this has to be weighed with the fact that Revengeance is a very brief experience that lacks a truly memorable story or much reason to replay the game, and that is perhaps justifiably going to make some people balk at paying $60 for it. In the end, although I had fun with Revengeance and feel good about wrecking recommending it to character action fans who aren't afraid of a short but difficult game with a hearty dose of insane violence thrown in, those of you who look to get the most bang for your buck on your game purchases would probably be wise to look elsewhere for now.